Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Post Cologne. Today I'm gonna to be unboxing three Middle Eastern fragrances from the house of Rue Broca and Le Gazelle. So let's jump into it. All right, so we are back with another unboxing first impressions video of three Middle Eastern fragrances that I recently picked up. Two of them, the Rue Brocas, I picked up from Fragrance Canada and the Le Gazelle I picked up from a new fragrance discounter, Maison de Arabia. And they got some great brands there that I've had a tough time finding up until recently with them. And also they got some good prices. So I'm gonna have links down in the description to both discounters if you decide you wanna check any of these fragrances out. So let's quit screwing around. Let's get into it. All right, so first up, we're gonna go with the House of Rubroca with Rubroca's Pride. Now you pick this up at Fragrance Canada for about $20, and a few of you have recommended I try this one as well as the Intense. So we're gonna try the original Rubroca Pride. Pretty excited, I've tried, I have another unboxing video of three Rubrocas, and I did enjoy those three fragrances. Well, two of them I enjoyed a lot, the other one was a little wishy-washy, but I am pretty impressed with Rubroca as a whole, so let's just, let's just get into this one, see what we're dealing with. All right, so there we have the box presentation for Rubroca's uh, Pride. It's a cardboard box, there's nothing much to it. Necessaries on the back, design on the front. See what the bottle looks like. All right, so there we have the bottle presentation for Rubroca Pride. Nice, thick, heavy bottle. It does have a, a little, I don't know, what would you call that, a little insert or overlay here. It is kind of a cheap plastic, but it does kind of have like a nice, you know, designer bottle kind of look to it overall. Cap on this is a pretty lightweight plastic and the atomizer on this bad boy. Decent atomizer, oh no, I spoke too soon. It's leaking on my hand a little bit. <sighs> Losing points for that one. Yeah, atomizer's kind of crappy, but what does this smell like? All right, so right out the gate, just smelling this in the air and all over my hand from testing that atomizer. It has a bit of a, like a, an aromatic sort of feel to it. There's maybe a little bit of citrus in there, but it has like a bit of spice that's going on to it. So there's a bit of a fresh spice, warm spice, and some nice kind of clean aromatics. It has a bit of a blue feel to it right now, but there, there's some, some nuances to it. It's not quite like 100% blue territory. So let's get this on paper and hopefully not all over myself. So you can go from there. Yeah, so right out the gate, this is kind of interesting. This is some sort of twist of some sort. It's it's a bit of a blue fragrance, so it has some sweetness to it. It has a little bit of that aromatics going on to it, but there's something kind of pulling it down a little bit in terms of like, an, like a bit of an amberiness to it, a little bit kind of a warmth going on to it. So there's kind of like a battle going on right now in terms of like it being a blue fragrance and it also being kind of almost like a, like a warm spicy style of fragrance. It's, it's nice, but it's, it's, it's different. It's an unusual twist. Yeah, it's definitely got a mix. It's definitely a twist of a blue fragrance with something else. It has some cinnamon that's in there. It has this aromatic sweetness, not quite a lavender. There could be some kind of more green earthy style of aromatics, but they also have a bit of a sweetness to it. I can't tell if it's like a geranium that's mixed in there. It has a bit of that shower jelly blue sort of vibe going on to it, but it also has not quite a gourmand, but it has like a sweetness, warm spiciness that's moving through it. Very interesting, but it, it has that kind of designer mass appeal feel to it. So. I'm not sure what they're trying to mash up right here. I can't quite put my finger on it. Yeah, so as I'm sitting here thinking about this, it kind of it kind of has this Abercrombie and Finch first instinct, sort of blue nature going on to it, but with some added sort of cinnamon note going on to it, a little bit like a warm, spicy style going on to it with a little bit more wood. So it's it's taking that blue fragrance kind of DNA, that shower jelly, sweet, aromatic sort of vibe going on to it, and it's mixing in just a little bit more of like an ambery woods and some cinnamon or a warm spice of some sort that's mixing into it. It is very nice, even though I'm coming across very confused right now, it's because I'm really trying to pinpoint what this is reminding me of. But this is a definitely a twist of some sort of designer style fragrance or maybe one I haven't smelled yet, but really enjoying the scent profile so far. It is unique to a certain degree, but in a very kind of mass appeal, crowd pleasing blue style fragrance. I, I don't even really know. Let's skip to the dry down and see how this kind of develops and we'll we'll try and figure it out from there. All right, so we're back with the dry down of a Rue Broca's Pride Pour Ohm. It's been just over an hour, let this settle down, do its own thing. Not a whole lot has changed. I think it's just kind of shifted a little bit. So maybe that is a change. Basically, it was a very blue style of fragrance that had that kind of warm, spicy, woody aspect to it. It was a little bit more on the blue side, a little bit more aromatic, had like that little touch of sweetness that was going on. It's kind of shifted a little bit more to that kind of woody, spicy aspect of things, but it's still maintaining that blue kind of 
twist to it as well. A lot more earthy as well. So there's like some patchouli sort of vibes coming through. There is that woodiness that's just pushing through, forming that foundation, but it has more of a fresh spicy appeal to it as well but those aromatics are still coming through. It still has that touch of sweetness. Perhaps a little bit of a tangy citrus is still lingering there, like kind of a grapefruity sort of tang to it. It is tucked in the background, but it is there and it kind of adds to that fresh spicy aspect of it. So overall, this is a pretty enjoyable fragrance, but it's almost a little confusing to be quite honest. It's not a bad fragrance. It has that mass appeal, crowd pleasing sort of vibe going on to it. But in terms of the, like, what it's cloning, I, I can't say it's cloning anything one-to-one. -one. It's got, you know, maybe like a bit of a blue de Chanel Sauvage sort of blue going on to it, but it's also got a more kind of a woody style of fragrance going on with that spiciness. I don't really know, to be quite honest. It's a blue-ish fragrance, it's a woody-ish fragrance, and it has those fresh spicy aromatics into it, and it is an enjoyable style of fragrance. It's just, I just can't tell you what it's cloning at this point. I'm gonna have to really sink my teeth into this a lot more, but we'll have to do a full review. I'll have to get this in a list once I sink my teeth into it. I'll let you all know, so stay tuned for that. That's Rubroca's Pride Pour Homme. All right, next up, going to the house of Le Gazelle, and it's Le Gazelle's Palatial. I can scoop this up for $22 at Maison de Arabia, and I haven't really even paid attention to Le Gazelle all that much. I've seen them around, but they were kind of hard to come by, but like I said, Maison de Arabia has a bunch of brands, including this one that they do carry. So this will be my first experience with this one. This did not come with any cello on it, and so, I'm afraid like I can't do the fans. I'll just give you guys the knife flip anyways, because I know you guys enjoy that. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's for the true fans out there. We'll just skip to the box presentation. So box presentation, pretty straightforward. It does have a slide off color and a bit of a neat design to it. So it's not completely boring. It's not a, you know, a totally normal cardboard box, but the bottle in this, where's the cap? Oh, it's a very snug lid and it's, it stole the cap. That's what it, what it did there. There we go. There's the bottle presentation for Le Gazelle Palatial. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Emblem up top of the fragrance bottle right there. And overall, just a pretty thick heavy metal or heavy glass style of bottle. I'm just dropping stuff everywhere. This is a bit of a disaster here. It, was, it threw me off because I didn't, I didn't get to do my, my cellophane cut. That's what I just had to jump right into this. Cap on this is a cheap plastic, pretty lightweight. And the atomizer on this, eh, it's, okay you'll get the job done i guess but what does this smell like so right off the jump just smelling this in the air this is very much a blue style of fragrance very sweet style of blue fragrance at this moment right now it has those aromatics but it is coming across very sweet almost kind of a bubble gummy style of sweet right now in the air so let's get this on paper let's see what we're dealing with yeah so right out the gate very really nice opening i'm enjoying this quite a bit it has the bergamot it has some pepperiness going on to it clean lavender and it has kind of a fruity sweetness going on to it, like a black currant style of fruity sweetness, as well as a little bit of vanilla, perhaps some kind of dusty style of tonka because it does have that kind of dusty texture going on right now, but still has that very kind of blue sort of feel, but it is definitely on the sweet side, but it has those aromatics that's worked in there. Very nice opening to this one. As this is opening up a little bit more, it's getting a lot drier. So there's some dry, ambery woods that are starting to come through. Like I said, it's got this kind of dusty tonka with that vanilla that's mixed in there, but you still get those nice aromatics. The spices in here kind of almost elevates those aromatics, giving it a little bit more and that kind of lift to those, that kind of clean lavender sort of feel to it. The bergamot has really dropped back. It's not as citrusy as it was in the beginning, but more of that kind of fruity sweetness is coming through, mixing with that sweet vanilla. So it is a little bit more sweet forward, has that blue sort of accord going on to it but with those aromatics and those spices and those dry woods coming through. Really quite nice, but it is your typical kind of designer blue style of fragrance. Not quite as spicy as a Sauvage. It has a little bit of a Sauvage sort of feel to it. it. Has a little bit of that kind of blue de Chanel sort of that sweet aromatic nature to it. So it's kind of like a mix between those two. It's not as spicy as a Sauvage, like I said, but it's it's in the neighborhood of those style of blue fragrances. Yeah, the, the woods kind of keep pushing forward a little bit more, getting a little bit musky, but it's still maintaining that sweetness. Has kind of settled down a little bit. It's not as bubblegummy sweet as it was in the opening, but it's still maintaining that sweetness. The vanilla is coming forward a little bit more and it's kind of pushing that fruity sweetness back a little bit. So it's vanilla, it's aromatics, it's got those spices to it with those dry wood accords, the kind of a vetivery dry amber sort of vibe going on to it with a little bit of musk. This is really quite nice. So let's skip to the dry down see how this kind of develops and we'll go from there. All right, so we are back with a dry down of Le Gazelle Palatial. So 
been just over an hour, let this settle down, do its own thing. This actually changed a little bit. This initially was a very blue forward fragrance. It had that sweetness to it, almost an overly sweet style of blue fragrance. But that has toned down a little bit. The Tonka has come forward a lot more than it was in the initial opening and that kind of midpoint of it. it still has a vanilla and it has a lot more kind of a woody accord going to it. Almost kind of like a salty marine cord kind of tucked in the back. There's an interesting sort of earthiness to it. It's like, it's again, kind of like a seaside earthiness that's kind of tucked behind those, those sweet accords, that vanilla, that tonka, and those woods. But you're still getting some of those aromatics that were there in the very beginning, along with some, you know, earthy patchouli sort of vibes going on to it. Still has a blue vibe going on to it with a little bit of a twist. And like I said, it's... It's not quite as spicy as Sauvage still. It's not quite a blue to Chanel. It's a bit of a twist of the two in between with maybe some a few added notes just to give it a little bit of a, a personality and differentiate itself. Pretty impressed for my first go with the Le Gazelle line, so I'm gonna have to try some more. Comment down below if you're familiar with this line and any other ones that I should be trying out because so far I'm enjoying this one. Definitely might be checking more out of these. That's Le Gazelle Palatial. All right, last. And hopefully not least, got another one from Rubroca and another one from the Rubroca Pride line, and it's Rubroca's Pride Intense. Now you can pick this up from Fragrance Canada for in and about $20 US, and I've heard of the two between the Pride and the Pride Intense. The Intense is a little bit better, but I will be the judge of that, so let's figure this out. And let's jump in. All right, so there we have the box presentation, which was the exact same as the, the Pride, but just a different color. So let's just see what the bottle looks like. All right, and there we have the bottle for Rubroca's Pride Intense, which again is pretty much the exact same as the Pride, a little bit of a different color glass to it, and it does have a lighter cap to it overall, but it is the same thing with that same kind of cheapy metal overlay on that there. I'm a little nervous to use this atomizer after my last experience. So just let's, let's see what this atomizer is like. Did you hear the bubble? It bubbled when I did that. It's not a good sign. Yeah, this one's leaky as well. I'm not impressed with these Pride Line atomizers right now. It goes far, but it also drips everywhere. But what does this smell like? So right off the jump, just smelling this in the air from testing that atomizer and a little bit on my hand. Really kind of woody, spicy, aromatic fragrance right now. I, I, it's much different than the the pride that I tested earlier. This is a lot more masculine. Like I said, Woody, I'm getting like kind of maybe a cedar note that's in the air right now, along with some nice spices. It's, I'm kind of excited about this one. So let's get this on paper, see what we're dealing with. Really nice opening on this one. Like I said, it has that woody accord. I'm pretty sure this is a cedar note that I'm picking up in here. A very woody style of cedar that has like a nice kind of like a, like a peppercorny sort of like vibe going on to it. So it has that like pepper sort of vibe that's kind of fused with that woodiness, but it also has some sweetness that's working into it as well, like a vanilla style of sweetness, has a warmth to it with that spiciness. And even with the sweet notes in here, it's kind of a warm sweet that's working in with those woods, a little bit aromatic and a little touch of bergamot. It, it has like a citrusiness to it. So like there's a tart feel to it, but there's also like almost like a fizzy nature to this. Yeah, really nice dry woods with this. The dry woods in this is very appealing, but I'm, I'm enjoying these sweet notes that are coming through. The spiciness is from like, like I said, a pepper, but it might be from like a ginger. I'm also getting some of that fresh spiciness with that kind of citrusy vibe going on to it with like a little touch of that citrusy style of sweetness that a ginger gives off occasionally. But it has that kind of dry, ambery woods, that dry cedar spice sort of vibe going on to it and a nice kind of warm style of vanilla. This is very, very nice. Yeah, really enjoying this one. Very masculine style of fragrance, but it just has that right pop of sweetness that's going in there that doesn't make it too like overly bold. So it has a nice balance of this boldness with that sweet touch to it. It's just, this is a really enjoyable fragrance so far. I will say it's not really jumping off the paper right now, so it's not very strong. I would like this to maybe be a little bit stronger, but we're dealing with paper and who knows here. But let's skip to the dry down and see how this kind of unfolds, but so I'm, I'm kind of excited about this one. All right, so we are back with a dry down of Rubroca's Pride Intense. In just over an hour, let it settle down, do its own thing. Not a whole lot has changed with this one, and I am kind of glad that it didn't because I really like that opening in that mid. And now in the dry down, those woods have come forward and they're like a lot more dry now. They have that amberiness to it, that cedar. Maybe some sandalwood mixed in there that's giving the vanilla that's in the base a really nice creaminess to it. Has this warmth with that vanilla as well. And these spices, this like nose tickling pepper sort of spice going on to it, fusing with those dry woods. It's just a beautiful mix of those woods, spices, and that warm, creamy, sexy style of vanilla. 
very masculine, very kind of alluring sexiness to it. So it has that soft, gentle side, but it also has that bold, spicy dry woods. I'm just ranting right now uh, about just this, the dry woods, the spices, the vanilla. Great combination. They're really well blended. I'm enjoying the scent profile on this quite a bit. You can dress this one up for sure. It has that kind of sophistication to it, but it is a casual style fragrance at the same point. And it has that sexy, masculine allure, appeal, that ruggedness to it that I think this would be good for date nights as well. We'll see how the performance does on this. It's not blasting off the paper, but I think it'll do fairly well. But I'm very, very impressed with this one. Not what I was expecting with this. I don't even really know what I was expecting. Maybe something a little closer to the Pride, which was like a little bit more on the blue side. But this is definitely not that one. It's it's not, you wouldn't think this was a flanker, just, just smelling this one. Awesome fragrance and for 20 bucks at Fragrance Canada, quite pleased with this one. I will definitely be doing a full review. That's Rubroca's Pride Intense. All right, so there you have it. That's three Middle Eastern fragrances. First impressions, unboxings. I went three for three on this one, in my opinion. I, I really enjoyed kind of the, the twists on some like dumb reach style of fragrances. Like they're not overly unique fragrances, but there's just enough little character tweaks to these that just it kind of made them their, their own sort of fragrance, but still very familiar. And I, I kind of enjoyed that one. Some blue fragrances, some blue twist fragrances, and that dry, woody, spicy vanilla one at the very end with that Pride Intense. Really, really awesome. Rubroca keeps impressing me with their fragrances they're coming out with, and the Le Gazelle, my first impression on that. Pretty impressed with that fragrance so far. But I want to hear from you guys. What are some other Rubrocas as well as Le Gazelle fragrances that I should be checking out and doing some first impressions and unboxing of? Comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. I love getting your different recommendations, hidden gems, taste and scent profiles. Appreciate you. And if you enjoyed this video, Make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.